Hi, my name is Marty Moore. I've been a chief nursing officer for over 20 years. I've been focused on how can you create healthy work environments? What is it really that creates that environment that makes you want to be there, want to contribute, want to give you your discretionary energy? What I'm going to share with you is part of my own personal journey, some of my research, but then additionally also leading into others. When we think about forgiveness, I always look to what's the meaning of the word? Because many times I have my own biases, I have my own opinions, my own thoughts around it. So my friend Webster says, forgive is to give up resentment against or the desire to punish. Stop being angry with or pardon or to give up all claim to punish or exact penalty for an offense. Overlook. Ooh, wow, that's a lot. And I think we do that in our own personal life. But in the workplace, when forgiveness enters in, or let's say the lack of forgiveness enters in, what happens? Well, here's what we know. When we look at it from a system standpoint, and when we think about systems and interactions, we have to think about it from the individual to a couple people to a team, to an organization. An individual can get stuck in the righteousness of the wall. An individual can become preoccupied with it. They can become angry. They can withdraw. They might feel guilt or fear. Ziegler says fear is fabricated evidence and appears real. But when you're in that moment of lack of forgiveness, everything appears real. And fear becomes your reality. When it becomes two people or three people, it becomes an issue of mistrust, avoidance, anger, punishing. We start to bring judgment in. We look for the offense. We look for what's happened in the past to confirm to us confirmation bias. That really and truthfully, this isn't a place that we want to be a part of. Or we can't trust. Remember, trust is an outcome. And so we look for the actions that reinforce the fact that we can't trust. And as it starts to spread into the team, we start to find fault finding and gossip, manipulation, scorekeeping, frustration, negativity. Have you ever worked in an environment that's negative? That every time you go there, you just feel like your energy is just lost? And then it starts to penetrate the organization. And when it penetrates the organization, you really see this kind of spread of mistrust, secrecy. People withhold information. You see high turnover. People just say, I don't want to do this. It feels out of balance. It feels confusing or controlling. Lack of forgiveness isn't just something that's in your personal life. It has to be a part of your professional life as well. You have to have consciousness around it and start to think about what is it that I'm doing that contributes to this lack of forgiveness? Am I, am I playing a part in this? Now, it's interesting because as leaders, we have a tendency to be fearful of it. Remember my friend Webster? Well, Webster talked about give up. Give up resentment. Give up all claim to punish. Leaders see that as a fearful thing. Leaders see that as a disruption of power. That if they apply forgiveness, then people are going to do wrongs all the time and expect them to be forgiving. That's not it at all. Leaders also are very fearful about losing trust, and yet by their lack of action, their lack of understanding what happens when you don't have forgiveness in an organization, it does the very thing they're fearful of. There's trust loss. Remember again, trust is an outcome based on the actions of the individual. So when we think about reframing forgiveness, 
step back for a second and think about the opportunities to use mistakes and failures and flaws and breakdowns as the, the ability to awaken greater wisdom, greater understanding, compassion, and capabilities of your coworkers and yourself. You know, this was actually a picture that I took. Um, and if I was to say to you that blue bubble you see there is a piece of trash on a beach, that's what it was. And yet when I stepped back and I looked at it and I thought about it, I went, wait a second here. This actually is a, is a different picture than what I'm seeing. Originally, I saw trash. But when I took my camera and I took the picture, I reframed it. And I gave it a new lens. What I want you to think about is, is that you, as we're talking about high reliability organization, as we're talking about preoccupation with failure and advancement of um, learning and patient safety and quality in that, we have to start to think about how do we create a culture that allows people to do risk-taking, that gives people grace. Not that people can flippantly not follow rules and do the right things, but in our human frailty, when we stumble and when we do, there's grace. There's forgiveness. There's an understanding, a learning. And when we do that, yeah, the culture is incredible. So if we look at the practice of forgiveness, it develops this organizational change. It's where people feel free to take responsibility and take risk and stop withholding kind of their creativity. Remember that conversation we had about when a lack of forgiveness enters an organization, people draw. They don't give you their best. We have to think about also is that it's a place, a workplace, that people feel safe to express fully their creativity, their thoughts. It's where they feel appreciated and they experience a sense of joy and meaning from their work. I have to tell you that um, as a leader, I started off in leadership, thinking about rules, structure, standardization. And I still think a lot about standardization. But when I stepped back and really started to think about humanity and the human frailty and the human error factor, I couldn't find a counterbalance to it until I thought about forgiveness. Now, it's not easy. It's not, it's not an easy road as a leader to step back and think about, do I carry judgment more in my heart than grace, forgiveness? Victor Frankl stated that the last of man's freedom is the freedom to choose his attitude under any given circumstance. When I had to have a moment where I thought about what is it that I want, my team, my organization, to know about me. Was it that I was rule-based? Was it that I was structured? It needed to be some of those things. I also wanted them to realize that it, I saw humanity through their eyes. I wanted to be able to dialogue with them with honesty, transparency. By doing that, I had to look in the mirror. Now, courageous leadership is a easy term to say and a harder one to put in action. I had a dear friend, mentor, who said to me, one cannot be gentle with others until one is gentle with oneself. Transformation begins by raising your own awareness and demonstrating responsible choice at the interpersonal level. She taught me to take three breaths. Now, the first time I did it, here's what I did. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that, that isn't effective, let me tell you. Because <laughs> the person who's watching you is like, 
okay, what's going to happen here next? But when I learn to take those breaths quietly, deeply, I reverse that fight or flight, that quickness to judgment. I also learn to ask myself, what is it that I really want out of this interaction? And I learned to listen. It's hard to listen as a leader. Really listen. Not pretend listen, but really listen. But when you work on that, set that as your goal. And when something happens and you listen and you meet them with empathy and you learn together, it fundamentally changes your workforce, your culture. Saying I'm sorry is not a sign of weakness in a leader. And yet most of us hold that belief. We feel that by confronting our own frailties, it'll make us look less of a leader. The reality is, is it doesn't. It strengthens. I had a moment where I was new to an organization. The organizations had merged. They didn't like each other. They were rivals on the football fields uh, between the high schools. And it, pretty much everybody thought that everybody else was hurting and harming others. Their hostel was the best. The other hostels in the merge system were the worst. And as I, as a newcomer, came in, I pretty saw them as all the same. Right, And so I set course, I set direction. And by doing that, I stumbled a lot. And I imposed my vision, my thoughts. I failed to recognize what was precious in their culture, but they were fighting to preserve, but they couldn't articulate it. And there was this moment where I'm standing in front of 200 people in an auditorium doing a town hall that I realized that I had done that, that I imposed my own will because I was trying to bring them together and move on. And then there was grief, lots. And I stood before him and I said, I'm sorry. I failed to hear what you were saying, what you were feeling. Let me listen now. I'm gonna tell you, it was probably one of the hardest but best town halls I've ever done as a leader. Because I was able to sit back and they were able to express. And once that was done, then there was a willingness to work. Now, it wasn't easy by any means at all. But they started to actually talk about how can we come together? How can we lean into each other's strengths? And yes, we had conversations about forgiveness. There were hurts and infractions that people had held on to. Maybe one worked at the hospital down the road. And they carried that as a judgment. Asking for forgiveness takes courage and integrity. Asking for forgiveness is probably one of the greatest strengths that you can bring as a leader. With forgiveness and asking is listening. Allowing people to express, hearing truly what they're saying, not judging. Guiding where it needs to be guided, but also understanding what happened, what can be fixed, what needs to be fixed and inviting them into being those problem solvers. In an environment of love and forgiveness, we thrive. This is Michael Stone's work, fabulous work. Think about this. In an environment of love, love in the workplace, it's there. We say it all the time. I love the people I work with. Love is a real human emotion. So when there's love, we have to think about the fact that there's forgiveness. And with forgiveness, we thrive. 
It is one of the cornerstones of creating a healthy work environment. And as a leader, to step back for a moment and to explore that concept, to think about it, to look for it in your own actions. When you're holding on because you don't want to give up that need for punishment, that anger. When you have that fear of, if I forgive, will they do it again? natural human behavior that brings in into our mind and into our leadership actions but you got to check it you got to think about the fact that wait a second here why did this happen what failures within our systems our processes caused it to happen what human frailty contributed when we reframe our thinking it's amazing to watch how this culture then opens up and changes into an incredible environment where people are engaged. They're willing to give you their discretionary energy. They don't want to leave. And it's not that the work isn't hard, it's hard, but they find joy in it. They find meaning. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for being open to the concepts that I've shared with you. And I want to thank you for your leadership. This is hard time. I think we say that all the time in healthcare, but these are hard times. Our team are hurting. They're grieving. They're angry. Having a conversation with yourself first around forgiveness and then helping them work through the emotions, the anger, will help you then to move on to creating and strengthening your own culture, your own work environment. Thank you.